Hey, this is Matt, and you're listening to Bluegrass Jam Along, the podcast for anyone and everyone who plays bluegrass. Hey, everybody, it's been a while since I've done a Food for Thought episode, um, but I've had something on my mind this week, and so I thought we'd do one today. Um, yeah, I've just been on various Facebook groups and online forums and bits and pieces over the past few weeks and just seen a few things crop up that have cropped up before um, but all around the same sort of time posts like is it okay to have pedal steel in bluegrass or does accordion belong in bluegrass or you know should there be dobro in bluegrass and it, it largely what happens when these posts come up is the in the comments it finally resolves to a point of a few people saying this version of Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys from this period with this instrumentation is bluegrass and if it doesn't fit into that then it's not and lots of people have opinions around that there are fine examples of pedal steel in bluegrass for example there's a beautiful Bill Keith Cherokee shuffle recording that has pedal steel in it and but anyway we'll all have different opinions on that but um, I think it's really interesting because ultimately how do you define a musical genre should you define a musical genre? Um, and if so, how do you pin it down? And did the people who made that music at that time think of it in that way? Um, and it made me dig back through some of the old interviews I've done, and I, I particularly listened to the one that I did with Tristan Scroggins a while ago, who's fascinating on this stuff and thinks about it a lot and is very um, eloquent when he talks about it. Um, and so I'm going to play you a little snippet of what Tristan had to say about this from the interview. I'll put a link in the show notes to the full interview because I think it... I hadn't listened to it for a while, and going back, it's I got a lot more out of listening to it again. And I think maybe you will too. So, yeah, here's Tristan, and see what you think. I do think that bluegrass is very unique as far as musical genres go in that in that sense. And then there's, all, there's definitely a weird thing with genre. I think about the, it a lot. Like, with with book genres, there's a little bit more, like, you can be a little bit more clear cut about something being science fiction or a mystery or whatever, but musical genres are very much just classifications meant to sell albums. Like it's just how, how to put something in a bin that um, a person who's going to buy it is most likely going to find it. And so while we can sort of retroactively look at, a time period of bluegrass and define it based on that. It again with John Weisberger, he, I'm going to sort of misquote him because I can't remember exactly, but he, his sort of idea about it is that if it's music that was performed with the intent of being bluegrass was sold with the intent of being bluegrass and bought as bluegrass, then it is bluegrass. Like it, it is all sort of based on this collective idea of what it is there it, to put an inherent marker on, on what makes something bluegrass or not. It, 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 it doesn't work because immediately it turns into, well, you know, it has to sound like this. And then, but then you have things like those albums of Bill Monroe and Doc Watson playing together that don't really fit that mold or a lot of Doc Watson stuff that like not everything he did was bluegrass necessarily, but a lot of it was, but a lot of it didn't, you know, broke a lot of the rules that people would ascribe to bluegrass and things like that. Cool. Um, yeah, that's it. It's a nice short episode. These food for thought ones tend to be, uh, maybe I'll bring these back if people are interested. I tend to just do them when I've got something on my mind that I want to ramble about a bit, but yeah, um, I'm going to, post this on facebook and on um instagram as well and i put links to those in the show notes and if you've got any thoughts come and tell me come and join in like tell me if you think a genre is a rigid defining thing or if it's a, a looser thing or what your thoughts are if you play an instrument in a bluegrass band that isn't a traditional bluegrass instrument um all good it's all conversation it's all like you know we're not looking for answers we're looking for interesting chat and opinions and things that stretch these conversations so come and join in Cool, that's it. I'll see you next time. Happy picking.
Bluegrass Jam Along is proud to be sponsored by Collings Guitars and Mandolins, making some of the finest guitars and mandolins in the world since the 1970s. Visit collingsguitars.com and find out why.